Hi all, welcome back. Hal here with more Take on Mars. And today what we're doing is working through the demo in the scenarios, which help you understand better on the food production and harvesting for both, you know, growing the crops as well as eating and drinking. Uh, so what we're going to do today is walk through this a little bit. And I'll show you what you have to do. So what you'll end up doing is everything you see here was provided as part of the as part of the scenario it's already set up for you you just basically have to figure out what's going on so this first tool here is actually the uh, the mineral extractor or the mining rig uh, when you put in any of the containers <coughs> you can you can harvest various things from the Martian soil. As you can see here, there's soil. Uh, you'll also get things like uh, iron or different types of nutrients out of the ground. For the soil, you use that here in the, uh, the hydroponic station. So to grow any of the plants, you'll need seeds, you need soil, and you need water. Um, by default, soil is already added. You can see there's a couple of seeds here. Let's open the inventory. Uh, so you've got a couple of plants already growing. I've gone ahead and put in some potato seeds And this now just basically takes time in order for it to grow Once you've got grown plants You'll be able to right-click it select harvest and as you can see here You end up with a couple of potatoes and then a couple of seeds um, I say just to go ahead and leave the things in here unless you're planning on using them right away. So like with the seeds, what we can do is we'll put seeds here and then you right click to plant seeds, you'll get the confirmation. And as things grow, um, as the seeds grow, you'll see the plants change. Uh, you'll actually see some sprouts grow up and it'll go through the stages. When you see these berry looking things at the top, that means it's, it's ready to harvest. Um, the other piece that you're going to need, since we've got the soil, you need water. So there's an atmospheric uh, separator, I guess you could, you could call it. It's a uh, reaction tool. It's a materials refinery. And what you're seeing here, so let me zoom in on it, is the soil that you, you mined goes on the input side. You then go over here to choose what you want. So in the reactions list, It'll tell you from uh, the split earth, you know, to tell you what you get. You don't, they don't know, it's an unknown input, so, because you haven't done it yet. And it'll tell you your output's going to be oxygen, silicon, aluminum, and iron. Uh, if you are doing carbon dioxide, it's carbon and oxygen. If you're trying to split the moon soil, you're going to get, you know, whatever. And that's true for everything. So if you're trying to synthesize, so if you need to create something uh, like carbon dioxide, water, or methane, you can actually put those into the input, the carbon and oxygen, and it'll give you carbon dioxide. Water is obviously hydrogen and oxygen. And you do need to keep those ratios in mind. Uh, so if it says two hydrogen and one oxygen, two of these containers will need to be hydrogen. One of them will need to be oxygen. When you turn on the reactor, any of the empty kits that you have over here will start to fill up with whatever you're synthesizing. Um, if you're breaking things down, whatever is in the input, when it comes through, the output is over here. So in order to add or remove these things, you hit Q when you have the assembly tool or the crafting tool equipped. Just give it a left click and you'll pick it up by default. So let's clear the, uh, the ground. And what you're going to want to do is to make sure you have this thing mostly positioned um, as you come around. You're going to need to make sure that the uh, everything's faced properly so that you can add it and assemble it over here. So when you get close enough, you're going to get the highlight. Just tap left, uh, the left click, and it's now assembled. So over time, these will, you'll, you'll notice that they will decrease. Um, so right now soil is what 120 uh, 80 out of 130 and water is 129 out of 130 so each time it ticks these will advance uh, a stage I think when you get towards the end it's every two consumption ticks will give you the last stage to harvest uh, but basically you just leave it alone and come back and it'll be done so uh, yeah that is the basics of the system in a nutshell. 
once it's fully implemented and you actually do have hunger and thirst, you'll need to use things like the water fountain, uh, which you can't use out here because it's obviously in the Martian environment. Um, if this was inside one of your bases when you were building, you would be able to take a drink of water. Uh, the other thing is, is that you will have freeze dried foods. If you press and hold E by default, you can open your inventory and then anything that you have in here for containers for water, you would be able to drop. Uh, so if you wanted to keep a, a bottle of water on you, you just put it here, fill it up and you're good to go. So the other piece is that you now have packed beef. Space food, pack steak from Earth. Mmm, it's good. So what you can do is just right click on it and you have the option of examining or eating. You just eat the food and that's pretty much it. I mean, it's really simple stuff. Uh, for the plants, again, you know, if it's ready to harvest, you can harvest it. If not, it'll tell you you can't. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's really it from the <laughs> on the way that the system works. So what we'll do is while we're waiting for the plant to grow, as you can see, my my new plant has now grown. Um, I still have one plant that hasn't started to grow yet. And it looks like we should have another plant or two before we, uh, or another phase or two before the potato is, har is harvestable. So what we'll do is we'll take a small tour of the habitat. And this is the habitat you start with. There is, you can see, a 3D printer inside. You can use it. Uh, you can bring it out here, deploy it, and build a habitat, which I do recommend doing if for no other reason than just for the experience of it. Um, it is an interesting thing to try. And then obviously you have the, the little buggy. Um, I have not actually used the buggy before. Let's see how well this works. Okay, so far so good. Looks like we've got a good power supply and we'll just take a small trip. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get out. This way the, oh look, even leaves trails, nice. So I guess if you uh, lose your buggy, <laughs> you can always come find it. And the game does support multiplayer as well. So the, most of the demos and scenarios are multiplayer supportive. So you could actually have a couple of people on the map basically all working to build, you know, a nice uh, location. And I am planning on doing some multiplayer with this. There's a couple of people who have expressed some interest in it. Um, as soon as we have more figured out on what exactly we're doing with it, I'll be sure to let everybody know. Uh, so yeah, when you get close enough to the any of the interfaces, you'll see a virtual mouse that shows up. You can also... Uh, switch over to your mouse control using right click. So we'll go in and we're going to close the door. And part of the reason why I want to do this is as you can see my oxygen is increasing because I am in a, uh, a safe spot. Uh, we want the crew quarters. And now we need to open the door. And you're now in the crew habitat. So what you can do in here is you open the inventory, remove your your gear. And uh, if you wanted to sit down, you can sit down mostly, usually. Yes. Come yeah, on. If you wanted to go lay down, you have the option to lay down. If you need to heal for some reason, if uh, you were doing something that you hurt yourself with. Why am I not? Mm hmm. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, you'd be able to lay down and uh, you'd be able to rest and that actually begins your healing process as well. So once everything is put away, uh, your suit is charging. It recharges pretty much instantly once you've plugged it in. Um, well, we're going to go up to the storage room, which is one level up. And currently there's not anything to really do in this area. I mean, you could, in theory, harvest potatoes, bring them over and drop them over here on the, 
the shelf if you want it to. Um, look out the window if you want. Hey, there's the buggy. It's another beautiful Martian day. Alright, so... And then finally, there is the lookout level. Um, you need to be careful when you're on the lookout level because... Well, you'll see. Is it not going to let me? There it goes. Okay. Because what happens is you are pretty much exposed to the Martian environment out there. So if you open the door, you're probably going to die. <laughs> so if you're going to come up here and open the door, make sure you do have your spacesuit on so you don't suffocate. Uh, but yeah, it's rather a desolate terrain, but it's beautiful in its own way. All right, so let's head back down to the crew quarters. And then there is a hatch that's at the top of the column that will uh, close when you lower the lift area. So what we're going to do is go ahead and grab this. We're going to put our gear back on. And if you want it to sit down, you just go over hit E. And look, you can sit down. <laughs> you tap E twice to get back out of any the, either the bed or the chair. Uh, to get out of the lander, you have to head down to the cargo area. And once you're here, just open the door and you're good to go. So that's the lander. If you close, you can close the door in here. Uh, so if you have like an environmental storm going on, you know, you're trying to protect whatever you have in here. That's when you want to close the hatch and basically just wait out the storms. So let's go take a look at the lander here, or the uh, vehicle. And you can drive from the right or left side of the cockpit. Uh, so, and like the real rovers, it's uh, not going to do, you know, 120 miles an hour. It's going to be a couple of kilometers an hour, and you're going to like it because that's pretty much the only way you got to get around the Mars. And. Unless you're walking. So. <laughs> what you might want to do is, if you are playing in multiplayer, is to set up a race course and see who can navigate the, with the highest level of efficiency because that's what how you're going to determine uh, who gets, who wins, basically. Hmm, what is that? I don't remember seeing that before. What is that? Is that an air brake of some kind? Let's see. Oh, you know what that is? That is, I believe, the radiators. So what happens if we close? Let's run around here. And I'm not too worried about dying in this because we've only got a couple of minutes left. So what I want to do is let's close this. I am rather curious to see where that goes. Does this get put away when you close? Nope. So what is that? I think it's the radiators for the power supplies. Um, but I'm not certain. It's been a while since I've seen something that I wasn't sure of. I'll have to check that out and uh, do a little research get back to you guys on that. So yeah, that's, in a nutshell, that is the uh, this particular portion of the scenario demo. Uh, like I said, it is a really early game. Uh, they are just now technically going into a beta. Uh, but their beta is still very early access, so you're going to run into some weird scenarios with it. You're going to find glitches. Keep it in mind, it is an early build game. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. I have really, really enjoyed this game. Uh, the one thing that I, I do wish they had more of was maybe a little bit more on the uh, the survival aspects. But again, for what they've got, it's a lot of fun. I hope you all enjoy it. And if you did enjoy it and you enjoyed this episode, please make sure you hit that like button on the way out. 
Every little bit helps, and it does help me determine what content you want to see more of. Uh, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe, because what that will do is keep you informed when new content comes out, as well as when I go live on either Twitch or YouTube. And if you have any comments or questions, suggestions or feedback, well, leave it in the comment section down below this video. And uh, yeah, so as always, uh, take care and be safe out there, everybody.